Hi, I'm Anish Vijay Raghavan from Chainlink Labs, and I'll be providing an overview of randomness in your smart contracts today. What can we do with it? What do we expect from it? Why is it challenging? And how we Chainlink Labs have gone about addressing the complexities and pitfalls so smart contract developers can focus their time on building great products. So a verifiable source of randomness allows us to provide users with fair, trustworthy results. Some examples of this based on blockchain can be found in two broad categories of gaming and NFTs, uh, which greatly benefit from randomness in fundamental ways and fair selection strategies that can be employed in various capacities in, a, in an array of use cases. From a gaming perspective, you can randomize rewards, create outcomes that are unpredictable and fair to all, uh, select scenarios that are unique, that create unique experiences for, for your users. Uh, from the NFT side of things, you can allocate unique traits in an unbiased manner. Uh, not only can you make them provably rare, but also unpredictable ahead of time. And randomized distribution of your NFTs such that those who are receiving it are fairly receiving it without having a biased input as to who's allowed to get uh, access to a new NFT. From a fair selection perspective, uh, being able to prove that you're your selection process is fair is critical. Uh, when selecting members for governance, inspecting a subset of representative data, uh, selecting winners, randomizing your airdrops, randomizing your IDO allocations. There are endless ways in which randomness can be used to either enhance your application or enable entirely new applications that are not possible without the ability to randomly verify outcomes are fair. So let's consider the properties we care about from randomness. It must be unpredictable, which means it is unknowable ahead of time and all participants are in the dark. Uh, if a single participant is able to predict it, your results are broken. Uh, it must be fair and unbiased. Every participant must be equally uncertain so as to not have advantage over any other participant. And uniform distribution is critical in order for users to be confident they all have a fair shot at winning. Uh, large enough, with a large enough result set, an enterprise individual may be able to identify and take advantage of patterns to skew the results in their favor. It also has to be provably random. Uh, the randomness must be verifiable, otherwise it can lead to user distrust. Uh, the verification cannot be done in a black box. Uh, to establish confidence in the fairness, anyone, not just the participants, um, anyone in the world should be able to validate that the inputs and outputs are completely random. And finally, we would expect it to be tamper-proof. Uh, any randomness generated must be resistant to external manipulation uh, by participants or vested interests. And the source of randomness itself must not be able to tamper with the results for its own gain, as it is entirely possible that your source of randomness can collude with one of the participants in that particular system. So what makes this challenging? So blockchains being deterministic and decentralized makes unpredictability difficult given that every single node of the network must arrive at the exact same results. Uh, a limited source of unpredictability does exist within block data. Uh, you might be able to select a block hash or perhaps a difficulty, uh, but these are fundamentally unreliable. Um, from a fairness unbiased perspective, there are more reliable ran sources of randomness off chain, um, but bringing those off chain sources on chain results in a set of trust questions. How, do you, how much trust can you put in your off-chain source? What are your methodologies by which you can minimize the trust? Which then brings us to on-chain verification, making it provably random. Anyone needs to be able to confirm your inputs are provably random, and that needs to be done in a manner that all parties can view it historically and have confidence that going forward, it is going to operate in the exact same manner you'd expect. And finally, it is important to consider the impact of finality by chain the opportunities for manipulation that are unique to blockchains uh, to ensure that it's actually tamper-proof. Uh, we must consider the various actors that can benefit from predicting, biasing, or generally tampering with, tampering with the results. These are just some of the critical factors we look into when considering uh, how do you create a elegant bear up solution that can provide indisputably fair outcomes. Now let's have a, a brief look at a few strategies that have been attempted. First, let's start with a naive off-chain implementation. And we can see that there are, are two primary pitfalls here. First, uh, you have to have trust in an off-chain source of randomness. And second, you have an Oracle solution that is sit in between that must bring this trusted randomness on-chain. Either party can be faulty or purposely malicious. 
Uh, what is your end user really getting here? Uh, it's hard to be certain. Um, so there has to be ways in which you can take both and make them uh, trustless or minimize trust in them uh, such that your users are getting the, uh, the benefits they expect to get. Now let's look at a naive on-chain implementation and the pitfalls of how this could work. Uh, one of the methodologies that's been used is to rely on block data uh, as a sole source of randomness. In this case, miners or verifiers can exploit the biasable data resulting in negative impact for your users. Moreover, some implementations are susceptible to reroll attacks where users can revert within a given transaction when they when an undesirable outcome is, is results from their particular action. They take a roll of the die and it doesn't work out, undo it. Then immediately retry over and over again until you get the outcome you like. Once again, it's easy to distrust the fairness of the outcomes. So taking all this into consideration, we create a chain like VRF. Secure, verifiable, reliable, and easy to integrate. Our research, our research team spent substantial time and effort to come up with an approach that avoids all the known pitfalls while meeting the expectations we have of randomness. We consider the nuances of each chain we deploy to and ensure tamper-proof results. Uh, we use on-chain smart contract verifications so you don't have to trust the VRF nodes. Our battle-hardened Chainlink core node software is the engine that powers Chainlink VRF and we continuously measure the responsiveness so users can get the most reliable service. And finally, we recognize that more than anything, users want to focus on their business. We want you to do the same thing. We want you to focus on business so you can get create the most creative new solutions and products that can exist. And for that, we want to ensure that the there is substantial ease of integration, uh, making sure that you can use our product within a matter of say minutes to hours is critical for us. And as we continue to build out the product, we always have ease of integration in mind. So let's let's dive a little bit into how Chain like VRF works. Uh, overall, broadly speaking, we have two key stages. First is to set up um, and, and make it so that you can actually start using Chain like VRF. Uh, so VRF nodes start by committing in public to a private key that is used to generate the random numbers. This is done by registering a hash of the public key with the VRF coordinator contract and by committing to this upfront, any error or purposeful manipulation by the VRF node can be detected. Users then select a key hash they would like to get responses from, deploy and configure their contract accordingly. And to make this easier, we provide a VRF consumer-based helper contract to manage the interactions with the VRF coordinator. So all you need to do is request randomness and implement a fulfill randomness function. Uh, which will then be called by our VRF coordinator at the end so that you can complete your work. Once this is set up and complete, uh, you are ready to use Chainlink VRF, uh, which then breaks down into three broad steps. Consumers or users of user contracts submit requests for randomness. Uh, the VRF nodes listens to the log events uh, anytime a request is, is submitted. They wait for a number of confirmations. Um, so that we have space between the initial request and the submission of the, the response, and then finally provide that response back to the users. Uh, the VRF coordinator then performs an on-chain verification, calls the consumer contracts fulfill randomness function, and therefore completes the whole cycle. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the actual usage workflow. So we start here with the user contract uh, submitting a request to the VRF coordinator contract. Uh, in doing so, we identify the key hash committed by, uh, committed by the VRF node and a nonce is added to, where, to uh, specific to this request uh, from this requester, uh, such that each one of these are, are perfectly unique. An, an event is submitted by the VRF uh, coordinator that the VRF nodes are listening for. Um, on a regular basis, we are all uh, always looking for what events are coming in and how, what actions do I need to take. Um, what you should recognize here is that we are using the block hash and the user nonce, but it is important to note that we are not relying purely on the block hash. Uh, the purpose of this is that every single uh, transaction that's submitted is unknowable ahead of time. So a user cannot know it, an app developer cannot know it, and the VRF node does not know it. Um, so block hash helps us get this unpredictability, but we do not rely solely on this uh, given the potential attack vectors from users and verifiers. VRF nodes detect and request this, uh, detect the request and generate a random output and a proof using the private key it is committed to ahead of time. Uh, given the seed data is fixed, our output for a given private key is deterministic. 
if a VRF node attempts to submit an incorrect response, it is entirely detectable. Uh, the randomness response will then be broadcast to the network after a predefined number of block confirmations have passed, uh, which serves to secure the results from tampering and improves user experience so reorgs do not change your results. You don't want to have an NFT that is extremely rare show up, you're very happy about it, and then five minutes later, 10 minutes later, it turns out it's not rare anymore. Um, the VRF coordinator then verifies this proof uh, so that the randomness has been generated correctly. If the proof fails, the response is rejected, and it's publicly verifiable by anybody, and it's, it's available on the blockchain for all of history. Once the successful verification is completed by the VRF coordinator, the user contracts fulfill randomness function is called to complete the workflow in end to end. We've built this workflow with the gas optimization in mind for, so our users can get high quality VRF on chain while minimizing the cost of operation. So the end result is a reliable randomness for smart contracts that allow you to focus on your business with confidence. Channel VRF meets all the requirements mentioned earlier. It is unpredictable, fair and unbiased, provably random, and tamper-proof. We also have a rapidly growing community of users. Uh, in just the last 30 days, we've had 200K or more uh, fulfilled requests and over 370 unique contracts requesting randomness over the last three months. The channel like VRF is a is, is available currently on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, and Polygon. And we have plans to expand to many more chains as our user community grows. Our team is constantly in communication with our users, and it's important for us to be always looking for ways to improve the product and broaden adoption. With that in mind, I want to take a minute to talk about some improvements we're making to Chainlink VRF um, so that our users get better uh, results as well as lowering their costs and have a better all, overall experience. In our next iteration, we'll be supporting a subscription model to simplify funding. An admin address can create a subscription and designate a number of consumer addresses that can request randomness and use allocated funds. We're also extending user-defined configurations uh, such that uh, as part of a request, you can submit how much call gas limit you would like to have for your fulfill randomness. You can also define the desired number of block confirmations before receiving your VRF response. This allows you to more easily account for your crypto economic and security requirements uh, and do so at a matter of time when you're developing your contract. Uh, it does not require that you set it up on a subscription ahead of time. It is unique to your particular requests. As an added benefit uh, to moving to a subscription model, we we're also able to reduce the gas requirements for requesting VRF, uh, making it cheaper for your cons our consumers. Uh, the overhead of transferring funds is removed from every request, and therefore, over time, that adds that can add up quite a bit, and you're saving a lot of gas just by doing that alone. In addition to this, uh, we've uh, thought a little bit more about VRF expansion, and we're addressing, we're looking to address user needs where some of our users uh, request several random words simultaneously, uh, and they are, it'll get expensive over time, and in terms of both uh, finances, as well as the time it takes to, to get responses. A single response can now be used by the VRF coordinator to expand on the VRF response from the node op, from the uh, VRF node uh, to split it up in several random words, greatly reducing the cost of fulfillment. So for the cost of essentially doing one request, you can get 10 random numbers or 10 random words. If you're interested in any of this, please go to our website and reach out to us. We're more than happy to work with you to uh, test out our new features and uh, get you into production. Uh, last part I'm going to talk about here in terms of use cases, there are so many different use cases that can benefit from randomness. A well-considered blockchain solution can provide your users with confidence to need to use your product. Uh, some, uh, some of you may not be using blockchain at all today. Um, you may have sources of randomness that are entirely centralized. And that may work uh, for a number of cases. But over time, we're going to see the industry move more and more towards having provably random verifiable functions that are using blockchains to verify the history and confirm that you are getting exactly what you need. Chainlink VRF can serve for this, serve you in this, in this capacity, whatever your use case may be. Um, so come check out our documentation and try out our product. Getting your first contract set up and running is doable in a matter of minutes. Our documentation walks you through the entire process, and our teams are more than happy to help you answer any questions you may have. Uh, jump over to our website and 
identify ways in which you can make use of randomness, grab some ideas from there, have a look at our documentation to get a whole lot more details on Chainlink VRF and how to make use of it. Thank you so much for your time. Here we go. I'll see you all in person next time. Bye. Thank you so much for that, Anish.